Hey, what's up? This is Václav. So, I'm revisiting parts of my home automation kit I did over the last five years. They're becoming obsolete and I'm refactoring them to bring them up to date with the current state of development. I made an overview of what's coming and why. If you can see that one, the link is in the usual corner. So with that, I can get straight to it. Today, let me revisit the time-based shades actuators. Solution is based on a Sonoff switches. Uh, I use the Sonoff 4 channel switch that controls two uh, shades at the same time. Uh, and it has a custom Arduino code. Why? Well, probably because when I did them, ESP Home didn't exist yet. And to control them uh, with the timing from the automations in Home Assistant wouldn't work. Definitely not for, for adjusting the tilt angle. So what I have done now is I still use the same son of switches, but I move that into ESP Home. That will hopefully make it easier to adapt it to other smart switches uh, like Shelly or uh, son of uh, Duo. It comes in two flavors, one for regular rolling shutters and one for Venetian blinds, where I need to control not only the position, but also the tilt of the blades. And I have an automation that adjusts the tilt regularly based on the weather, sun elevation, and the internal temperatures. This is one of the older videos, and I link that one here as well. What flavors used to have the same Arduino custom firmware? But in ESP Home, I address each of them slightly differently. First one is using standard time-based controller. Uh, for the other one, I made a custom uh, Venetian blind component. Now, before I dig into the solution, I would like to make a disclaimer. Why do I make a custom actuator in the first place? Why don't I just use some of the off-the-shelf actuators like uh, Fibaro? Well, when I did this initially, such actuators didn't exist and the Sonoffs, they were quite cheap and available. There were some proprietary solutions, but uh, I would have to replace the whole electronics and really the whole shade, and it was very expensive. And I think uh, it didn't have the interface to Home Assistant anyway. Now, there are more options available today. If I did it now, I'd probably try these, or even better, I would probably get a Smart Blinds to start with. And that is also the reason why I didn't migrate the solution to ESP Home for a long time, thinking that I will rather replace them with uh, some one of the shelf kit. But the time shows that it's got its users and advantages. The commercial solutions have uh, their own limitations and they're not perfect either. And they might not work with every single shade. And mine just works. And if I don't like how it works, I can just change it. So I didn't really find a good reason to replace them. Yes, uh, they are a bit more work initially uh, to set up, but uh, they work now and it gives you some extra flexibility to tweak the logic so that it works exactly like you need. For example, if I would use ESP32 chip to control them, I can combine it with the Bluetooth proxies nowadays or with light switches or perhaps with door sensors. Now, I don't know. I think it's got uh, its own users, but if you're not one of them, just skip the video. With this out of the way, let's dig in. First, the roller shutter. It uh, uses a standard time-based cover component. I only made a few tweaks to that that I like. First, to control them, what I like is when I shortly push the button, I want them to fully open or close, so I don't have to hold it. Uh, but if I hold the button for a longer time, I want the shutter to stop when I release the button. So this is how it's done. So this is the configuration of the ESP Home device that is controlling the rolling shutters. It's got all the usual sections like for the ESP Home, but I will hide them so we can focus on what is important and that is the configuration of the covers. Uh, this one has two covers because it's in the room where there's a door and a window and each is a separate cover. So for that reason, I'm using Sonoff 4 channel to control it. It controls both uh, covers through single device. In some other rooms, I have uh, only single shutter and therefore I can use like a Sonoff Duo or some uh, uh, dual smart switch. Now, both covers are identical, so I'm going to explain just one. They only have a different time because the one for the door is 
longer. Uh, and the covers are platform time based. This is a standard ESP Home cover. And to configure that, uh, you have to configure uh, three actions. There is an action to open the cover. And this one is turning on a switch, which is a GPIO switch. It's a relay that uh, pushes the button to open the cover. And uh, then there is a close action that is uh, turning on the other relay that is pushing normally the other button that is closing the shutter. And as you can see, it's here configured that they interlock each other. So just to make sure that you don't press both at the same time, because usually if you do, you would enter in some kind of configuration mode for the shutter and you don't want to do that. Normally, if you have manual switches on the wall, the uh, switches are made in a way that you can't push both at the same time as well. But here is just to make sure that uh, it doesn't happen. And finally, there is a action to stop the shutter. So there I'm just making sure I turn off the relays both for up and down. And to finish it off, because it's time-based cover, obviously you have to configure the duration uh, for the shutter to fully open or fully closed. These might be different times. And there are because if the shutter is opening, it has to pull the weight of the shutter. So it takes a little bit longer. So there is a time configured in a millisecond, uh, both for opening it and for closing it. And that's really it. So these are the two uh, switches that are controlling uh, the buttons. And uh, this is the cover configuration. Then uh, I also want to be able to control it by the uh, switch on the wall, by the buttons. And for that, I have a binary sensors. Again, these are GPIO inputs. And as I said, I would like to have uh, two modes for the operations. And the first button is to open the shutter and the second one is to close it. And as I said, uh, for both of them, I have configured an option for a short click and for a longer click. So for a short click, which is uh, shorter than half second, I just say cover open. And then I have a configuration for longer push, which is longer than half second. And what that one does is it will also call uh, open cover, but then it's going to wait until I release the button. And when I do, it'll say stop the cover. And uh, I have the same uh, for the second button. Uh, so there I have on click, in this case, uh, close the cover and on a longer click, more than half second, I will start closing it and then I will stop it when I release it. So these are the two buttons for the first cover and I have uh, the third and fourth button doing exactly the same uh, for the second cover. And I added one more cosmetic addition. With the time-based shutters, I was always afraid that because they do not have the feedback on the actual position, there's always a small error. And as they keep moving up and down, the errors keep adding. So over the time, the actual position would drift far from what the actual actuator thinks. So what I'm doing is when the shutter fully closes, which happens automatically every day at sunset, I turn on the switch for a few seconds to make sure it extends fully. So this is how it looks like here. I have an action on when the cover is closed, then I will again turn on the relay two. So this is the one which is closing it and uh, I will keep it on for two seconds. So I'm pushing the uh, close button for additional two seconds when the shutter is closed, if you will. Then the Venetian blinds. This one actually turned out to be a pretty good deal, I think. I think I did something really great here, watch me. I think it's uh, quite close to the first one, except the time-based cover doesn't support tilting, so I can't use that. I've been fighting with it some time, trying to use template and cover, using global variables for the tilt, and it could work, but the thing is, with the tilt, it takes about one and a half seconds to fully tilt it, and if I want to control exactly the tilt angle, the timing is quite important. And the script was becoming quite complex and dirty. I didn't like that. So then I made a custom cover. That one was working, but I had to manually copy the file and the configuration was kind of dirty. 
And I thought, if I have to make video about that, I can do better than that. And I did. I made a custom component that you can use exactly the same as the time-based cover. Plus you can control the tilt. And all you need to do is to add this external component to your device configuration. It will download the custom component from the GitHub. Then you can create a cover uh, with platform Venetian blinds. Configure it exactly as the one before. And then just add tilt duration. That's it. Install it to the devices. And as you can see, it will create the cover entity that will also has tilt control. Don't you love it? Then I can use the binary sensor to control it by the wall switch, similar to the roller shutter. Uh, I differentiate between short press and holding it, but I do it the other way around. To fully open and close, I need to hold it for longer than a second. And for shorter push, I stop it on release. And the reason I do that is I'd like it to control the tilt precisely manually. Now you can install it as any other ESP home device, but since I'm upgrading it uh, from my custom Arduino code for this one, I actually created a web server, a web page, and then there is an option actually to upgrade the firmware. So there is a password, uh, if I remember what it is. There you go. So uh, here I can uh, choose the file and update the firmware. So what I'm gonna do is here, uh, I'm going to uh, install it and I'm going to say manual download. There you go. So I can uh, save it, let's say to my desktop. And then uh, I need to disable the old shutter and it was a uh, manually configured MQTT device. So I'll go to covers. This one is uh, the bedroom. So I'm going to Command it out, save that, and then I'm going to go to developer tools and here I can uh, reload manually configured MQTT devices. So this old cover should now disappear. So now I can go to it, I can pick up the file. So it was on the desktop. Uh, this is the file, I can open it, update firmware. So it's a uh, successful, it's rebooting. And if I did it right, uh, Home Assistant should discover it in a few seconds. And here we go, it's discovered. So I can check it out, configure it, submit. And there is a password for the API. And then uh, I'll choose the area. So this is gonna be bedroom finish. So now this is edit and uh, I see my shutter so I can control it. And I can also see all my automations because I have uh, used the same entity name. So this has been quite a big change. I used to have uh, quite few devices programmed in Arduino and I have been gradually moving them over to ESP Home. And this was the last one to go. I'm now fully on ESP Home. I should probably get a t-shirt. Let me know if you like that, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Bye.